Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is The World Away. And you've probably noticed I've had a move around in the workshop. And it's all to do with this beast here, the Uniformation GK2. I started printing models on it, as you know, from the last video. And if you haven't seen the last video, I have put a link up here to that. It tells you all about the printer and stuff. Uh, but I'm a big fan of Jason and the Argonauts, and I have been doing Talos. Now, I still need to make a diorama of it, but Talos is finished. You may be wondering why I've got both of these models up here. Well, stay tuned, and I'll tell you all about it. Now the reason I've done the Gremlin here, and I built that on the channel last year, and the Talos, is both of these models were sculpted by a guy called Mikel Valerius Rodriguez. He also goes by the name of Sephon66. Now Mikel has his own Patreon page called the Creative Geek MB, and as you can see, all of his models are on here, uh, but he also is on CT Trader as well. And if I click over here, you can see the CT Trader website with all of his models. There's the Gremlin there. Uh, and he's also got Talos, all of these available on here. Now he's an amazing sculptor and I actually support him on Patreon because that is how I've got hold of Talos. I haven't seen him in this pose anywhere. And the other problem I've had is I've never been able to print him on a filament printer, which is a welcoming change for me because I've got this 8K resin printer now. And as you know, I printed the top half of Talos at the moment. Let me show you what the finished print looks like. Now again, as you saw in the last video, I had already printed the top section here, but printing the bottom section here does prove to be a bit of a challenge. I did have a few foul prints for that. And the reason for that was my own Darth fault. And I'm gonna show you how to make sure that if you have got a large piece with lots of flat pieces, how you can make sure that you're gonna get a perfect print every time. So what we have here is the base, as you can see here. Now, the problem we've got is if you've got a base that's this big, and you're trying to print it onto a build plate like this, you're gonna have a bad time. And that's because the FEP sheet and the build plate are gonna try and play a game of tug of war. And it may very well stick to the build plate, but because there's such a big surface area, the FEP sheet is always gonna try and pull it back. Now you can change the lift speed, you can change the bottom exposure time, but it is gonna be a really hard print to try and get that to stick as there's this endless tug of war happening. So you don't want to print big surface areas in one go. So for that reason, I'm going to tilt it over in that sort of direction, just like that. Perhaps a, a little bit actually that sort of depth there. And the reason being is when we actually do the layers on this, and if I just look from the top here, we've only got small surface areas each time, as you can see printing. The only time we're going to start getting large surface areas is when we've actually done the full print but it's not one massive block in one go as you can see and that will ensure that that will stick to the mat now once again you are going to need supports for this so what i do is i click over here onto the supports and it's going to generate supports with a um a raft here for it to sit on so if i click all you'll see how this looks there's all the supports, probably too many, and I've only put light supports in here. You can put medium or heavy, depending on uh, how this is actually printing for you. But on mine, as you can see, it printed absolutely perfectly. But that is how I deal with big surface area pieces, which have got lots of flat sides. And I learned the hard way, because first off, I tried to print it flat. It was never gonna happen because of that tug of war going on. Then I did print it an angle, but the other way around, so it was printing the big flat side first, that wasn't happening either. It's only when I manipulated it into the position you saw there that I managed to get that to stick absolutely fine. And bear it in mind, it does also help to have a bottom exposure time. As you can see here, I bumped that up to 50. And I also just uh, reduced the lift speed to 100, just to make it a little bit slower for when the actual uh, build plate is pulling the uh, resin off the FEP sheet. If it's too quick, again, there's a chance that it could stick down there, but a nice slower lift will ensure that it goes onto the build plane. It does enable you then to print heavier pieces 
to get what you like here. Now, to give you an idea of size, that is what that's looking like. And that was all printed with that GK2 there. Now, the reason why I've moved this up here and why it's now prominent in the workshop is because this workshop in the summer can get a little bit too hot got an air conditioning unit there which I can turn on uh, should it get too hot but in the winter it can get too cold come with me I want to show you something so it's October in the UK now and it's starting to get cold last week was hot started to get cold now and if you've watched the channel long enough you'll know I've got the weatherstone here that was made to me by Chris Hurst uh, and it's been put up here but I've also added a thermometer which is just here I'm reading the thermometer at the moment it's 10 degrees, whoops, 10 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's right. So it gets quite cold in here. Now, if you're trying to print with cold resin, it's not going to be a good time for you. Now, the good thing is about the GK2 is that it actually warms the resin before you print. So here's the control panel for the printer. It's all touchscreen here, and I haven't taken the protective film off. I don't like taking protective films off things I'm touching. Uh, but at the moment, the temperature is 28.6 degrees, as you can see there. Now, it won't start printing until it gets to the temperature that you set it to. So if you click on settings here, then system settings, and scroll to the bottom, you'll see it says heating on off. Make sure that's on. And then I've got a slider bar here, which changes it from 25 degrees to 30 degrees to 35 degrees. Now, when it's on 30 degrees or 35 degrees, if I was to print that now, and I've got a file loaded up already here, and to print, I just click on my USB. It's a little ghost file here, and click on that. It's telling me that's what it's gonna look. It's gonna print some little ghosts. Click play, and it's telling me how much resin it's gonna use. As you can see here, 52.1 mils. Click OK, and it's gonna verify the file to make sure that it's in a format that it can print and it's so uh, everything's looking okay with that so we'll just let that count up now before it will print it won't do that until the resin is heated up to the temperature and you'll see a big pop-up screen come up now telling you what the temperature is and there you go it's 29 degrees and it's basically going to start heating that area up to heat it up to 35 degrees now i don't want it that hot i normally only have it on 25 degrees depending on your location i find 25 degrees is absolutely perfect for this printer. Now it can take between eight and 10 minutes to heat it up to 35 degrees. That's why I keep it at 25 degrees. But when I come in in the morning into the workshop, especially in the winter, things are a little bit cold. That is a godsend. Now I don't think many printers actually have that on the market. Uh, and I just wanted to tell you that feature uh, straight away. Now it does have a fan underneath the vat tray, which actually pulls the air in, heats it, and then it heats the vat tray. And that's how that works. Now, at the moment, that GK2 print has actually come down a little bit in price. I have put a link on the screen with a QR code. There's also one in the video description, and it will actually uh, tell the folks there that you've come from the World of Weight site. But because uh, I'm using it so often, that's why I put it up there now, because I've got plenty of models to build, all thanks to uh, Cephon66 as well. I've got a big queue of things that I want to build. Now, in the last video, I showed you how the VAT tray works. I showed you how the build plate works. There is one thing I didn't show you, and I want to quickly show you that now. And that's something that the great Lou Del Meso advised me to get. I actually got a few of these and I've already installed one at the moment. But this is a protection sheet for the screen. This fits underneath the VAT tray on top of the screen and it will protect your screen. Now on the VAT tray on this printer, if I just bring it over, I have got resin in here, but there's no UV sources, I don't think. It has got this lip around there. So if the uh, resin comes up to this side, it's not going to go over the edges. But if it does or it scrapes on the side, having one of these sheets in, make sure it doesn't get on that valuable 8K screen. So always make sure you get that. Now there are two other machines that I really need that I've already been told I need to invest in. One of them's a wash station, one of them's a cure station. So one of them to wash the prints, one of them to cure the prints. So in further videos, I'm gonna show you when they arrive, exactly how I use them. So the only other thing left to do now is to decide what am I gonna print next? Now I've gave that some great thought. And as you can see, I have Vincent over here. I'm going to be building a scale model of Maximilian. Now, if you know Maximilian from the Black Hole, he's the big red robot with the whirring spinners on his arms. Uh, it's not going to be to the scale of Vincent because this thing would be bigger than the workshop. Uh, but I am going to make it a suitable scale so I can actually display that with Vincent over there. Now, there is one other thing that I need to tell you about this printer. In the last video, I told you that it is a standalone machine. So you'll have files on a USB and you can plug that in. There's no Wi-Fi compatibility. That's until now. They've actually done an update, so you can have that 
as a Wi-Fi machine. And that's only just been announced uh, now. So uh, that is hot off the press. So if you are in a market, you are a beginner and you want a printer, which is so easy to set up that even I can do it. <laughs> it's so easy. And I've only had two foul prints for my own stupidity. And I'm hoping my advice can help you when you do your prints so you're not wasting resin, you can get it right first time. Do head over to the uh, Uniformation website, which is just down here and again in the video description. But I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.